human rights activities. I'm an activist. Uh, I have to say, my mom introduced me as a soldier in the civil rights movement back when she went and pulled me off the basket and took me to participate in the 250,000 uh, people march that Martin Luther King had in Detroit. He had that march before he did the one in uh, Washington, Washington D.C. Okay. Okay. And it was a historic march, and it uh, helped to cultivate my understanding of where the world was, where people were, where urban development was, and things of that nature. Uh, I have been involved in uh, political activism all over the country and here in Jackson. Uh, we helped to uh, raise the movement, the, the grassroots convention, which really launched the campaign for the first black mayor. Uh, we helped to uh, generate more recently here a campaign for the first black uh, sheriff, uh, ran a youth program for years, which got hundreds of young men into uh, school, into college. Uh, because it was a basketball program that we had, but it really was a education program in many respects. Uh, ran uh, youth programs as far as scouting and a number of other different things and have been a set on boards, many different boards. Wayne County Legal Services in Detroit and set on various different boards uh, in the uh, city of Jackson as well as around the country. And so, uh, you know, some of the young people may be interested in knowing I was a lawyer for three years for Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur. Tupac Shakur. Uh, right. More recently, I have uh, represented uh, Buju uh, Banton. Uh, actually, I didn't know much about Buju Banton, but he's a, a fairly well-known uh, reggae artist, right? Uh, I'm representing him now, and of course I had the pleasure of representing the Scott sisters. But those are just a few of the names of the cases that I've been involved in. But my emphasis, when I became a lawyer, I didn't become a lawyer so I could have a big car or a big house. I became a lawyer so I could do a beautiful cause. And I had seen Martin Luther King get locked up in jail. I had seen various other people fighting for their freedom get locked up. And I said, I'm going to be a lawyer. And I read the back of Malcolm X's book where he had wanted to be a lawyer and he was told by his teacher that's not a realistic goal for a Negro. So I figured I'd become a lawyer and become the lawyer that he would have been. And so uh, uh, that's what that's been my, my work. And of course, since 2009, I'll end by saying I have had the pleasure of serving on the city council of Jackson, Mississippi. I've never run for a political office before. I was going to ask you that, yeah, that right. you decide to get into yeah, this yeah, a little I, later, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't never ran for a political office. I think well, I ran when I was in high school. I ran for a student government president. <laughs> I, was, I was fortunate enough to win that, but didn't run for another one until 2009. And so for the last four years, I've had an opportunity to work with the city uh, as its city councilman, work with the people in Ward 2, and really work with the people over, overall in the city. So that's a little bit about who I am. All right. So tell me, um, as I ask Jonathan Edwards, you know, why are you offering yourself uh, for this seat as mayor? Uh, I think that is, I, I, I would be a timely addition to what we need at this particular point in time in the history of moving forward. I'm not running to criticize anyone else or to condemn what anyone else has done. Uh, actually, I think that uh, in the scope of things, uh, even though we have complaints and we have problems, uh, what has been done uh, is something that at some point in history we can write about and say it was a, it, it, it was it was a reasonable approach to our problems. However, Right now, I think that we're lingering at the level of maintenance. Mm. We're not moving ahead. We're not creating new initiatives. We have to have new initiatives. We have to have like economic marketing and mission, and economic mission uh, initiatives, which uh, which pre which uh, you know which go beyond anything that we are doing at this time. Uh, and at the same time, we have to have criteria which goes with that in terms of businesses coming into Jackson. Mm -hmm. Businesses want to come to Jackson for their own reasons. What the trick is, is to make sure we go out and find businesses that not only want to come here, but that we need to have here and which are willing to help the people of Jackson as they help themselves. And so uh, I think that I can bring those kind of initiatives. I'm fairly well familiar with the national scene. I've traveled international. And I think that a lot of what we have to do is going to involve not only 
uh, marketing ourselves locally to ourselves, okay? In other words, uh, Oath of Cain, you got a few bucks in your pocket. Go over there and buy up uh, some of that real estate and help build a new development. Right. Uh, but also uh, in cooperatives, not just you by yourself, in cooperatives. But we got to market it statewide, we got to market it nationwide, and internationally. It's, it kills me where people tell you don't deal with these people internationally, these people, and then the next day you see they got a deal going with them, you know. So we have to be working in our own interests and make sure those things happen. And we have to develop criteria, which I'm sure we'll reach uh, in our conversation as we go on. Absolutely. And, and let's talk specifically about this whole economic development piece. What, what, what's the mayor's position? Or what, what should his job be for that? Should uh, he be the head cheerleader? Or he uh, or she? I think the mayor has to be the trigger. Uh, that helps the whole thing go. The mayor doesn't have to be an expert on every area of economic uh, activity. In fact, he can't be. Uh, that's why uh, I think that my training as a lawyer makes me particularly well suited. The reason for that is, is that every case I have, I have to bring in a number of experts. I have to listen to them, understand them, and for that case, I got to become an expert. Right. I may never know of another thing about fingerprints in my life, but for that particular case, I'll know everything about fingerprints. And the same thing is true in a medical malpractice case or any other kind of case and so that's what a mayor has to do the mayor has to be confident in himself he doesn't have to feel that he has to micromanage everything he should not feel the, uh, insecure about good ideas a mayor has to be willing to accept good ideas, to listen to good ideas, and if he hears some ideas for one reason or another that he does not think will work, he has to say that. He should not be liberal. He has to, in other words, when I say shouldn't be liberal, I'm not putting that on the continuum right. of conservative right. to liberal. I'm right. saying right. he should not allow things go unaddressed which should be addressed, okay? And so if someone says an idea or does something or messes up in his administration, he's gotta be strong to speak up. But at no point should he suppress the freedom of expression of the people in his administration or the council. Uh, I, I've been in a real good position to learn about this council thing. And uh, we really have to be a family. Uh, I have a thing in our people's platform, which I have on my website, which says is that we have to practice the practice of what we call unity, criticism, unity. Uh, we have to come into the picture united, understanding what we agree upon. First of all, figure out what you agree upon. Secondly, then discuss or criticize.